that is a gift that keeps on giving. So let's thank him right now for the Holy Spirit. Let's thank him now for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for bringing us the comforter. Thank you for bringing us the protector, the advisor. Thank you, Jesus, for the incoming of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you today. Thank you this morning, oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's shake off the rust from the hard wheat as we concentrate and focus on the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all your blessings. Thank you, Jesus, for your favor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit was with you as you traveled up and down the roads this week, even this morning, bringing you into his sanctuary. You ought to give him praise for that right now. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit watched over your family on this week, advised your family, and kept them out of hurt, harm, and danger this week. Thank the Lord for that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He watched over your home throughout the night. You should thank him for that. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Whether you were able to eat at Ruth Chris this week or the child's Happy Meal at McDonald's, he still provided you with nourishment for this week. That is a blessing. Give the Lord praise right now for his provision. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated here in the sanctuary, uh, out there in Facebook Live and uh, YouTube Live. If you want to keep standing, we won't stop you. But if not, you may have a seat as well. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience here at Better Life Church of God in Christ. Here at 2101 Atlantic Avenue in the beautiful city of Chesapeake, Virginia where our pastor is the Honorable Superintendent Dwayne S. McNair, Sr. Let's give him a hand at this time. As well as his beautiful First Lady, Missionary Velma McNair. Let's give her a hand at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning we were led in prayer by none other than our pastor, the superintendent, the shepherd of this home. And we thank him right now for helping to prepare the atmosphere for worship on this morning. We're here to remind you that you can indeed join us every Sunday here. Prayer at 1030 and then the worship service begins at 1145 a.m. I did say prayer at 11 at 1130, right? Did I say 1030? All right, so you can begin your prayer at 1030 if you like, but here we officially started at 1130, followed by worship service at 1145 a.m. After that, you can join us for Sunday school. Someone say Sunday school, where we get closer in the learning of God's word by way of our superintendent of Sunday school, Deacon Oren Flynn. Let's give him a hand. You can join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. via the Zoom map. And then Wednesdays at 7 p.m., you can also join us via Zoom for our Bible study and prayer. That's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via the Zoom app as well. And then finally on Fridays, we have our noonday prayer via the Zoom app with the prayer warriors coming together to pray as well as to give a word of encouragement. Amen. So those are our services for the week. 
So as we go forward on this morning, I just got to say, I'm so glad I'm here. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here in Jesus name. Oh, I'm so glad I'm here. So glad I'm here. So glad I'm here in Jesus name. Well, I'm so glad I'm here. So glad I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here this morning in the land of the living, being able to fellowship with the saints of God as we get together in one accord, not only here, but in worship temples all over the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As this is Communion Sunday, join with me as we sing this hymn of the church that talks about there is power in the blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you ever evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Hallelujah. Y'all help me out on here. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Evil of victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter? Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains, sin stains are lost, and it's life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Service for Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you lift praises, his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Let's go back to verse number one for just a moment because that is the reason that he gave his life that his blood will wash away all of our sins and give us every win over evil amen so let's go ahead one more time would you be free would you be free from your burden of sin there's power in the blood Power in the blood, would your evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious. Blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the 
the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cleansing power, the power of the blood that takes away every sin and stain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we stand to our feet, we will be led in our invocation by Elder Oren Flynn. And following him, we will have our scripture this morning by missionary Leroy Parker. Say amen as they come. Hallelujah. 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 One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Ah, hallelujah. Here we are again. Here we are again, gathered together as a unified body of believers, lifting ourselves up, our faces, our spirits up to the living God, whom we are so appreciative for all that he does for us continuously. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, because... Hallelujah, there's none other like you. Hallelujah, we praise you for your greatness, for who you are and, and all your wondrous works. And so, Lord, as we come together today in this service, Lord, we pray that you would move by your spirit, by your spirit, Lord, in and amongst us. Oh, hallelujah, to lead and guide us in order our steps and everything that we do today that your name might be glorified hallelujah help us to glorify you Lord hallelujah in the name of Jesus oh hallelujah so that uh, hallelujah so that we would welcome you into this place and into the service today oh Lord hallelujah do what you do do it as only you can Anoint us, O oh Lord, for hearing. Anoint us for service today. Anoint us, O oh Lord, for ministry. Hallelujah, for evangelism. That through what we do today will not just be a ritual. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, but somebody will be blessed by what we do today. Hallelujah, even somebody's soul will be set on fire in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to lift you up today, hallelujah, in a more excellent way, in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless us as we sing, as we exhort, and Lord, as we hear the preached word today, oh, hallelujah, so that we might do everything, oh, Lord, to, the, to your glory, oh, hallelujah, so that souls will be saved, lives will be enhanced Oh, hallelujah, and somebody will say, what must I do to be saved? Help us to do it right today, and we pray it so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Our scripture today will come from Romans, the third chapter, the 23rd through the 26th verse, and it reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he may excuse me that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. 
May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. 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 I've come to praise him. I come to praise his name. I've come to praise him. I've come to praise his name. I've come to praise him. I've come to praise his name. I was telling you why I was here today. All right. The musician got involved. I was just telling you why I was here today. But since we're there, come on. Put your hands together. Is that why you came here today? I've come to praise him. I've come to praise his name. I've come to praise him. I've come to praise his name. I've come to praise him. I've come to praise his name. in the midst of prayer, let me welcome Elder Jonathan McNair as he leads us further into this praise and worship experience. Amen. All right. Oh, he's my rock. He's the we here. I know he'll never He's just a tool. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I come. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you know? church tell them especially if you bring a praise with you look at your neighbor and say did you bring a praise with you come on let me hear you clap your hands I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna get out your way look at your neighbor and say Pentecost ain't over Say Pentecost is not a holiday. It's a way of life. Mother Jones, I dare you to touch Sister Lathan on her shoulder and say it's a way of life. Pentecost ain't just something that happened one day. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hear the sound of Pentecost. Now I need you to do me a favor. If you got two hands, I don't care if you're four or if you're 84 or 90 something. I want you to put your hands together. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, everybody clap your hands. Come on, this is the sound of Pentecost. I know some of y'all might be thinking I'm stalling, but I'm not. I hear a 
sound. See, I just saw a young person jump up. I know what I'm doing. Come on, clap your hands. The Lord can still move. Don't worry about who's here, who's not here. Look at your neighbor by the eyes and say, you are here. And as long as I got another praiser, I'm going to be all right. Everybody clap your hands. Just about one more minute. in the power of Pentecost. I say they were all in one place. They were all on one accord. And suddenly, can I tell you my theory? This ain't Bible, this is just me. I don't believe they was worried about the suddenly. I think because they were just worried about being in one place and on one accord, the suddenly just happened. I got about three amens. A lot of times we're waiting on something and all we need to be worried about is where we at and who we with. Because if you're with the right person in the right place, then suddenly it's gonna happen. That's why Deacon Flynn, you've been in your house some nights and the Spirit of God came in when it won a Sunday because you was in the right place with the right people. It's suddenly something. 
something happy. Come on, I dare to touch yourself on the heart and say, get in the right place. Around the right people. Don't worry about the suddenly. Let, that's God's part. Look at your name and say, that's God's part. That's God's part. That's God's part. All you got to do is be in the right place. In the right time. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Ooh, I wish I could go back to 11 Mosley Circle. When I used to literally be in my room. And I would come downstairs to see my daddy rolling around on the floor because suddenly. See, the young people don't know nothing about this. Because where he arrested you was where you worshiped him. I know what I'm talking about, Mother Jones, where the suddenly happened on aisle six in Fool Lion. Because that's where he came at. I hear some of y'all racking sack. I hear you, tiny giant, wherever you happy. That's why I worship him. As we worship him in this moment, just a short moment, we're not worried about the suddenly because that's God's part. I want you to look to your left and I want you to look to your right. Say, I'm in the right place because you're here. And we're on one accord. What are we on one accord that he's going to heal our bodies? Come on, do you believe it? I see young people clapping their hands. I see young people waving their hands. Suddenly it's going to happen. Nobody told me the road would be easy. Oh, I don't believe he brought me this far. To leave me. I don't feel no waste time. I come too far from where I start. I started from, I just want to encourage somebody on the way to Calvary that nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have tested him of his God. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched on him of his garment and his blood. Yes, same thing, Jeff. I am a sinner saved by his grace. It's Jesus in my soul. He picked me up and turned me around and he placed my feet on higher ground. Oh, it is Jesus Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have such the hem of his garment and his blood. Come on, we're about to enter a real worshiper zone. Come on, if you've been dealing with the spirit of grief, I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, if you've been dealing with the spirit of grief, you know the Holy Ghost is here for that too. Come 
on, if you've been bound in your mind by the spirit of grief, come on, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Open up your mouth just a little bit, just a little bit. Let them know where you are. Come on, let this room be saturated with the whispers of worship. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here for your grieving moments. Touch us, Lord, as we deal with grief. Mm. Come on, lift up your hands. And his blood has made me. As I go to my seat, I remember being in that house, Harmony, one time. 11 Mosley Circle. And I had the type of parents, Tiffany, you know what I'm talking about, that will worship God anywhere. And literally, whenever they decided to worship, the radio, the TV, everything went off. It just didn't make sense to keep watching the TV when your daddy was speaking in tongues or your mother was worshiping God. And with the attitude, you would get up and say, here we go again. And you will cut the TV off. TGI Friday could be on Family Matters, step by step, it didn't matter. Wherever the Lord moved. But the reason, Pastor Jeff, I cut off the TV is because I heard my mother say, he touched me. Thank you, Sister Elmore. He touched me. Now he's touching me. And she said, oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know. So Abigail, me and Dwayne Jr. would just close our eyes, lift up our hands, and she said, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. We just did what we saw our mama and daddy do. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happens. And now, and now. Me, he made me whole. He made me whole. He made me whole. That's it, Madison. He made me whole. Transition. He made me whole. He made me. He made me whole. Come on, does anybody over here know what I'm talking about? He made me whole. He made me whole. He made me whole. He made me whole. When I was broken down, he made me whole. 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 Hallelujah. He made me whole. Something happened. And now I know. He touched me. And made me Yes, Lord. 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 We praise the name of the 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 
Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we praise you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we lift you your holy name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this day for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We thank you for what you've done during this week, God, and here the first day of the week, bringing us to a new week. We praise you, God, for Pentecost. We praise you for the worship and the praise and the prayers and the scripture. God, we praise you now. We thank you. And we say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let the church say, amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Truly, we thank God for this opportunity to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. And we had a time on last week doing our Pentecost celebration. The Lord moved and the Lord filled. Amen. The Lord moved and the Lord filled. And he can fill again. Amen. The Lord can fill again. Hallelujah. We thank him. We give him praise for his filling. We give him praise for his mighty move and everything that he's doing in this day and this season. For we do praise God for uh, the elders that have brought us this far, for Elder Jamar Parker and for Elder Jonathan Lee. Hallelujah. We praise God for them and, and what God is doing in their lives on today. And I just thank God for them and also uh, Pastor Jeff, who is on the, the Hammond B3. And we praise God for him on today. We want to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord. Amen. Elder Flynn. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. We want to go into the word of the Lord. We find the word of the Lord in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 3. We want to read uh, a few verses in your hearing on uh, today. Amen. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Whom, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength and he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. I want to um, look at this text again in verse 2. 
where it says, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Today I want to speak from the theme, we all have crutches. We all have crutches. This man had a crutch. This man had what the dictionary described as a crutch. Something uh, that holds us up, that helps us, that supports us, and keeps us going. Uh, we are dependent upon crutches a support or support system and or something that to lean on. Our survival for a thing is dependent upon a person, our culture, and it causes us to live. We have a crutch. According to this text, the young man uh, reaching close to the age 40 had a crutch to lean on. The Bible tells us that he was brought to the temple on a daily basis to ask for alms. And it is important for us to recognize that the healing of this crippled beggar was done by the power of Jesus Christ. Through the apostles, Jesus said to follow his lead concerning those who were believing in him. And we could see the work of the apostles working as they, as the Bible described, that they went to the temple during that hour to pray. The Bible tells us it was the ninth hour. And in that hour, we looked to uh, Peter and John, as they began to experience what had just taken place a few days before uh, on Pentecost, we find ourselves that uh, Pentecost was an event for many, but for the believer, it was an experience. It was more than just an event. It was more than just a holiday, as Elder Jonathan said. It was an experience. They went on to say, even as the scripture began to be more pronounced, have you received since you believe? This man was laying at the gate called Beautiful. Uh, we find him at Solomon's Gate, at the place where he found himself a place to try to ask for some help because he needed help. When we look at asking for arms, he was more than just lame. Hallelujah. He needed money. Amen. Hallelujah. Money can be a crutch. Yeah. Hallelujah. Friends can be a, a crutch. Yeah. People can be a, a crutch. God has given us the understanding here as we focus on this scripture. I want to kind of bend the scripture just a little bit because we look at people many times and we see the state and the condition that they're in. And we see that we find them holding on to something so that they can get around. Yeah. Hallelujah. Many of us have to walk with a walker. Many of us have to walk with a cane. Yeah. Many of us have to have some type of device or something to help us make it through our day without falling. Hallelujah. I just got a report just a few moments ago headed to church where uh, a young lady had fallen and there's bleeding, on not bleeding, but water fluid on her brain. And they have to have hip surgery because she damaged her hips. You know, without the assistance of a crutch, you can fall prey to whatever dilemma in your life is. We can't think to ourselves to be better than someone else because we don't, we, you don't see us walking with a crutch. You don't see us walking with a cane. You don't see us walking with some type of assistance. You don't see us holding on to someone else to get where we have to go. 
The Bible says uh, in verse 3, it says, Who seeing Peter and John, this man saw Peter and John going to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. Hallelujah. This means that the apostles had taken on uh, a love, a love for prayer, a love for being in the temple, a love for going to where Jesus was. If you read all through Acts, and we're going to be studying the book of Acts on this month and on the next, the next few days, because Pentecost didn't stop on Pentecost Sunday. It continued. Hallelujah. It continued. The Bible says in Acts 2 that they continued daily in prayer in the apostles' doctrine, fellowshipping one with the other, giving, uh, breaking bread with one another because the Bible said that this was what they loved. I, I would go this far. I, I would go this far to say, and I'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, is the best crutch you can have. Hallelujah. Somebody says something to lean on. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I need the Holy Ghost to walk with me. I need the Holy Ghost to live with me. I need the Holy Ghost to be in me. I need the Holy Ghost to abide in me. And that's why I'm always calling on the name of the Lord. Always praying and blessing the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Peter and John was about to go into the temple and they fastened their eyes on this man. Hallelujah. And in verse 5 it says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting him them to do something of them. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I will give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I'm going to give you another crutch. One that will help you get up. <laughs> one that will help you walk. One that will help you not just walk, but leap. Hallelujah. Not just leap, but praise God. Uh, not just praise God, but magnify the name of the Lord among the people. Not just magnify the name of the Lord, but show forth God's power and his grace. Hallelujah. And he took him by the hand, the right hand, and lifted him up. Hallelujah. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Hallelujah. His feet and his ankle bones received strength because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them in the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. The text says, actually, he was still holding on to them. Hallelujah. He was still holding on to them. Hallelujah. And the people, the people, that's why you shouldn't feel so bad when you go through. Hallelujah. Because when you come out, there are witnesses that you went through and you came out. There are witnesses that you was once lost, but now you are found. Today, as I enter towards my close, I want you to focus on a very important element of this text and of this theme today. We all have crutches, which simply says we all have a choice to make. When I look at this theme, we must recognize that we must focus on our devotion on our relationships, and on our environments. Hallelujah. Because devotion, relationships, and environmental impact has a lot to do with the crutch that we, we may be carrying. Let, let's not just call it a crutch. Let's, let's go back and look at the core meaning of what we are talking about today. Something to depend on. Someone who makes us dependent. Someone who leads us to have to depend on them. A support or support system. Something to lean on. Our very survival we're leaning on. Things that we depend on to carry out our personal beliefs, to carry out our personal uh, situations. And a lot of times it's in the midst of our culture it's in the midst of our relationships. It's in the midst of everything that we have and say. It's important that we have a life of devotion and that life of devotion be centered around God. 
Because if that life of devotion is not centered around God, it can go any and everywhere. Our devotion is very important. Our devotion is our loyalty and our commitment and our dedication. Hallelujah. Are you loyal to that crutch? Are you committed to that crutch? Are you dedicated to that support system? And we must ask ourselves, what side or whose side are we leaning on? Is it the Lord's side or is it the world's side? Because the Bible tells us to be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. God is the best way to go. When we look at our devotion, we look at our habits. Because our habits and our devotion will create the substance in which we lean on. The substance, the crutch in which we hold on. Do you have a good crutch? Or do you have a bad crutch? Do you have a healthy crutch? Or do you have an un unhealthy crutch? Lord have mercy. Do you have good habits? Or do you have an unhealthy habit? Do you have a good loyalty? Or do you have unhealthy loyalties? Do you have good commitments? Or do you have unhealthy commitments? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody said the other day, they said that one of the things that we must understand as parents is that we can't just give our children a box of Captain Crunch. Well, Hallelujah. And expect them to live off of Captain Crunch. Hallelujah. And not get the proteins, the minerals, the vitamins, and all of the other supplements that we need to live a healthy life. And then we expect them to be able to endure hardness like a good soldier. Hallelujah. We expect them to be able to go through life's challenges just eating dessert. We expect them to go through the pain of life and not be able to deal with the things that they need to deal with. And when they're not leaning on us, they're leaning on someone else. And the world has an evangelism power like none other. Hallelujah. Where they want to, they want to defund, hallelujah, the church. They want to defund the, the Bible. They want to defund the passages of God, the word of God, of the living God. Hallelujah. And fund everything that the world is doing. Can I submit to you today that we are living in the days of Noah? The days where there was a lot of unbeliefs. There were a lot of core things against the word of God. And when you get used to leaning on certain things, if they are not healthy for you, then you will be not leaning on the Lord's side, but leaning on other things. Our devotion, our loyalty, our commitment, our habits, what we eat and drink should be centered around the God that we are depending on. Amen. Hallelujah. Our relationships, there are crutches in our relationships. Hallelujah. Our relationship develops the bonds that we make with one another. It develops the connections and the dealings that we have one with another. Hallelujah. Where we go and where we hang out will determine how strong we will be. Relationships fuel our cultural appetites. For the Bible says, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be healed. Alcohol is a crutch, a bad crutch. Can I make it plain? Hallelujah. Hanging out with the wrong people that don't believe in God, hallelujah, can be a bad thing. You know, uh, I was listening to a clip on the radio yesterday, uh, satellite radio, and uh, 
It's some cultural issues going on throughout our country, and many of all of us know about it because we hear about it every day. Hallelujah. We hear about what, uh, what Bishop Patrick Wooten describes as Jesus Pride Month. <laughs> Lord have mercy. As he describes against what the world is trying to do. And, and I feel sorry for, I feel, I, I pray for, for our, uh, our um, uh, uh, what you call it, therapists <laughs> that we have in church every day. Because they have to counsel according to their clinical training with a bent towards knowing what their personal belief is. Because when you are in the world and you are doing things in the world, you have to follow certain orders as long as they don't cross your line. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And carry out the, the will and the work. But I was listening to the radio on yesterday, and the young lady, they had gotten upset because of what the governor in uh, Florida had done with certain laws and amendments. And they decided that they were, since they couldn't have their gay pride celebration like they wanted to, a group of teenagers got together and decided that they were going to uh, act out their dramatic presentation. And uh, the script went kind of like this. And uh, uh, the young lady and the young man were having a, a, a conversation and the man asked the lady, who are you today? Are uh, you a girl today or you are a boy today? And the young lady looked at him and said, I'm neither one. I don't feel like I'm a boy or a girl today. Lord have mercy. And, and, and one gospel singer said, I can't get with uh, what we are doing to our gay friends because of the fact that I love them. I have a lot of gay friends and I love them. Oh, Lord, it's quiet in the house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you know why I need some money because I approve this message. <laughs> and, and, and the devil going to come after you, but the Bible, our Bible tells us that homose the choice is yours. I'm not going to hate you for the choice that you make. The choice is yours, but there's a consequence to every choice. And, and, and somebody say, well, why preacher? You talk about it all the time. No, I don't talk about it all the time. And, and if I did, I should, probably should because every day I turn on the radio and look at television, they're talking about it all the time. And, and, if, and if you be silent, and they keep talking, then our children are going to believe what they're saying, and all we got to do is pick up the Bible and says all unrighteousness is sin. Adultery is sin, just like homosexuality is sin. And the Bible says that it's going to be judged. And what we as Christians are going to have to do is to learn how to live in a society that has rejected God. Because sooner or later, God is going to judge the society. It's not time for us to judge. We're not judging. I'm making myself clear. I'm speaking in cool English. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're not judging. We are preaching the gospel just like they are preaching what they believe. Glory be to God. And Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. My father told a story one time that a man died and went to hell. And he said, let me back down to earth. And they said, you can't go back down to earth. And he said, well, please, if you go back down there, tell my friends and my family that I don't want you to go to hell. All right. You can't build a church like that. But we have to watch our relationships because there is a difference between darkness and light. I, and you know, when I was growing up, when I was, when I was Michaela's age, Lord have mercy, and younger, I would hear the young folks say that I can't wait till I get 18 because I'm getting up out of here. Uh, but guess what? A lot of them that got out of here at 18 
and went what, to do what they call uh, experience the world uh, back in church today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Because the Bible says they will not depart. Mm. They get out there and they find out ain't nothing better than serving God. I'm a living witness that there is nothing better than serving God. And you know, I don't have to be right. I don't have to be right. Hallelujah. There are some things that I would like to stand on the floor of the General Assembly of the Church of God in Christ and make known to the General Assembly, not whether I win the vote or win the election or whatever it might be, but that the record will show. Hallelujah. Because there's a judge that's going to call the record. And when he calls the record, hallelujah, all I have to say, all he's going to say, didn't you hear this? And didn't you hear that? Well, I don't have to believe it. But I want God, I want to be anointed just like these apostles were. Hallelujah. So that I can teach the gospel and preach the gospel so that my friends and my family would know that this is the best way to go. Hallelujah. We can't make anybody do anything. That's not the church's job. The church's job is to carry the mail. The church's job is to know enough about what you believe so you won't be ashamed about what you believe. Lord have mercy. A lot of us can't stand against the devil and against the world because we're not, con we're not committed. We're not really sound in what we believe ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And that's why David said, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Hallelujah. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I'm going to preach in a minute. I feel a preach coming on. Hallelujah. Second week in a row, I didn't even know how I got out of the bed, Mother Flynn. <laughs> I don't know how I got out of the bed. I said, Lord, there's my hand right here. It needs to come up and push myself out of the bed. Hallelujah. But now, hallelujah, I feel a preach coming on right now. Hallelujah. Pastor Jeff, I feel, I feel a move of God. Hallelujah. And we're not going to stop praying until the Holy Ghost keep moving and keep falling among the people in our day. Hallelujah. Our relationships got to be, has to be holy. Hallelujah. Our, our behavior has to be holy. What we listen to has to be holy if we're going to honor and glorify God. Our relationship has to be God-driven and not man-driven. Third of all, and finally, we have to check out the environmental aspects of our lives. You can walk into a place and get contaminated. Hallelujah. Just the other day, they were fixing some methamphetamines, and the police had to go in there in those white uniforms so that they wouldn't be exposed to the chemicals that get into the air and that can go through your skin and destroy your body. Lord have mercy. It's the same thing with the spirit of the devil. Hallelujah. The spirit of the enemy. The spirit of the enemy will get in your spirit because most of what we're dealing with yes. hallelujah. Most of what we're dealing with is spiritual. Yes. Hallelujah. Homosexuality is spiritual. Yes. Adultery is spiritual. We're not, just done, we're not just dealing with just homosexuality because all unrighteousness is sin hypocrisy, hallelujah, is sin. Acting like you save on, Mon on Sunday, but not on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is sin. Hallelujah. And the only way, on, the real only way to get dirt out of, of, out of a garment is to mix it with some detergent. Whew. The only way to get rid of sin out of my life is to mix it with the detergent of holiness, of righteousness. This power that Peter and John had was detergent power. Hallelujah. It was the addressing, say, look here, dude. 
You don't have to deal with the crutch of your life and having people carry you around anymore. You can, you can get another crutch. You can get another ankle bone stimulator. You can get another something that will help pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. You can get more help, something that you can depend on that will never go away. Hallelujah. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. We are affected by the things and the people that are around us. Hallelujah. You let a, a television show come on and, and they say one curse word on it. And first lady will say turn it off right now before they can finish saying the word. <laughs> because she don't want nothing in her spirit. Have you, ever, have you ever went to sleep one night and you closed your eyes after watching a horror movie <laughs> and you couldn't sleep the rest of the night? It got in your spirit. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in a situation where your spouse or your child or your husband or your wife said something to you and it got in your spirit and you won't write for a few days and some? Lord Hammer, it got in your spirit. Have you ever had a situation where you just wasn't right because of something that had happened? Hallelujah. It got into your spirit. The environment, hallelujah, can get into your spirit. The places where you go can get into your spirit. The people that you hang around can get into your spirit. We are affected by the messages that are constantly driven to us. Hallelujah. Watch a movie sometime, and all they throw on to you is the F-bomb. Why? Because they want you to have a sexual appetite in your brain so that it will not go away. My, my mother-in-law, my late mother-in-law had some issues when she first went to the nursing home because of the woman or the person that was in the nursing home room beside her. And she would say certain things, and because of the level of dementia that she had, she was picking up on what she would hear. Hallelujah. And it was affect, affecting her negatively because of the environment that they were sitting around. Hallelujah. We have to make up in our minds that we're going to fully engage in God so that people and ourselves will have the help that they need in order to live in the midst of all of this temptation and all of these trials that we face. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost. And if God fill you, say, God fill me again. Uh, God, I want to be filled until I'm so drunk I can't stand on my feet. I want to be filled so that I'm so drunk, intoxicated that I can't even move around any kind of way. God, I want to be filled so the Holy Spirit would just fill me up and when I, when I move around the place. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in chapter 4 that Peter and John were terrible. They were trying to get as many people as they could in their presence, but sometimes people were healed just from the shadow of them passing by because of the anointing that was on the inside of them. The world, the situations in life want to distract us from having the level and the power of the Holy Ghost that we need in our lives. On last week, we talked about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah and the names of the Holy Spirit. But along with the names comes the job. It's said that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of our Lord. The Spirit of the living God. Somebody says, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of Christ. Spirit of the Son of God. He's the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of adoption. The Spirit of the burning fire. The Spirit of the counselor that we need. The Spirit of faith. The Spirit of the glory of God. The Spirit of the grace of God. The Spirit of holiness. The Spirit of judgment. The Spirit of knowledge the spirit of life and that more abundantly the spirit of love for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son. The spirit of might. God has given me strength and power and might. The spirit of promise. The things that God has promised me, he's able to perform. The spirit of prophecy. There's been so many words that God has spoken to me. And I thank God that they have come to pass. The spirit of supplication. God, I submit myself to you because your spirit is in my spirit. The spirit of truth because the word of God is truth. The spirit of understanding. I can see clearly right now. The spirit of wisdom. I know how to do what I need to do because the spirit of the wisdom is upon me. The spirit of God is everything that I need. And if I would trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding I'm learning to lean on Jesus finding more power than I ever dreamed I'm learning hallelujah to draw closer and closer to God I'm learning to trust in God with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding I'm learning how to go higher today I might be a little lower a little lower but God is going to help me to go higher in the name of the Lord learning how to stand on the promises of God I'm learning how to trust in God I'm learning how to be a saint of God I'm learning to know God and to stand on God's word I'm learning how to be bold bold enough to say this is not the way I'm going but I'm going to follow Jesus all the days of my life I'm learning to lean on the Lord I'm learning to trust in the Lord I'm learning how to pray pray to the Lord move in my life I'm learning how to pray and tell my friends hallelujah say what must I do to be saved I'm learning how to trust in God I'm learning how to walk with God I'm learning no I may not be perfect no, I might not be the best, uh, but I know uh, that God is working on me. Ow, oh, eyes have not seen, uh, ears have not heard. Uh, I'm not what I used to be, uh, but I thank God. Uh, hallelujah, I'm better than I was. Uh, oh, yes, I'm learning, uh, learning, uh, I'm learning, uh, I'm learning, uh, I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm learning to be filled with the Holy Ghost and his power. Hallelujah. 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 Whose side are you leaning on? Hallelujah. Whose side are you leaning on? Who are you walking with? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we all have a crutch. Somebody said, you need to get rid of that crutch. Hallelujah. Look at the training wheels on the bike. You ought to get rid of those training wheels. Hallelujah. But Jesus, I'm going to lean on you until you come. Hallelujah, because we all need the Lord in this world. Sometimes our biggest challenge is ourselves. We beat ourselves up over some wrong things that we've done. But if you ask the Lord to forgive you, that's over. That's past. Hallelujah. People are always going to judge you. Hallelujah. They're always going to judge you because you're always going to have children around you. And children judge. Children criticize. Children find fault. But you say, God, thank you for forgiving me. And you know, God is so God. 
God is so much God that he had the power to forget. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Man may never forget. I could never understand how a person, a famous person could die after living many, many years and everything gets straightened out. And then as soon as the news reporter gets the story, they say, well, you know, so-and-so just died. And the first thing they pull out of the files is the thing that they did wrong. Hallelujah. None of your business. <laughs> God is a God of love because he forgives. And if you feel like you say you feel, you'll forgive too. And if you can't forgive, I ain't studying you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean. I'm learning to lean. On Jesus, I'm finding more power, uh, yeah, yeah, than I've ever dreamed. Oh, I'm learning. I'm learning I'm learning doctors practice and Dwayne is learning <laughs> because this gospel comes to me first that's why I'm learning to lean on G Jesus I'm finding more power than I've ever dreamed. Lord, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. If you're here today, hallelujah, you may not be saved. When I speak of salvation, I speak of the confession that is spoken of in Romans chapter 10 and chapter verse 9, where it says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. If you're here today and you want to be saved, if you're in our listening audience, the altar is open for you hallelujah hallelujah if you're here today and uh, you are learning to lean on Jesus and want to lean even the more on the Lord, I want you to come. Hallelujah. If there's something in your life, hallelujah, you can lean on God right now. We can pray with you now and touch and agree with you right now. The altar is open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. You don't have to go. I'm learning to lean missionary.
I'm learning to lead. Oh, I'm learning to lead on Jesus. I'm finding more power than I've ever dreamed. Oh, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Holy Ghost, do it now. Do it now. Is there anyone else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. I'm finding more power than I. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. I, I can't say right now what I see. Hallelujah. But I know the Lord is talking to you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes, it's over now. Hallelujah. It's over now. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my girl is here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you turn that air up just a little bit? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My girl is here today. Glory to your name, Jesus. God, I want you to cover this vessel. Cover from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. From the things that she see and the things that she's learning. God, give her strength. God, let the spirit of an evangelist come out of her spirit. God, we thank you right now that you're going to give it to her right now from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. We thank you, God. This is an evangelist. Hallelujah. This is a preacher of the gospel. And we thank you right now. We thank you right now, dear God, for what you've already done days and years before. The manifestation is already so. Hallelujah. There are people that want to be great doctors, great athletes, hallelujah, great competitors, hallelujah. But if you want to be an evangelist, hallelujah, you ought to say right now, I want to be an evangelist for the Lord. We're almost closed. I just want to pray for this house because God is, God is a confirmer of his word. I said it, Sister Joseph. Now God is going to confirm it. 
Hallelujah. And once he confirm it, you won't be able to deny it. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to do a new thing. Hallelujah. In your life. Hallelujah. God is going to show you some things that I've talked about. That I've explained to the best of my ability. He's going to confirm those things. And when he does, hallelujah, don't act like you don't know it. You, you didn't hear it because he's going to do it in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. It's Holy Communion time. Hallelujah. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary, the blood. That gives me strength from day to day. celebrate Holy Communion. The Bible tells us in the Corinthian writings, Paul said that this we do in remembrance of him and we do it to testify of his life, his death, and his suffering until he comes. We share this with all believers that God has promised to heal us from our misunderstandings and from our sin. If you never really get 100% healed in your body, be healed from your sins. That's why he died. And we do this the bread which represents his body the word says was broken for him Jesus gave his body Jesus was the fulfillment of those prophecies that came 40 and 2 generations before he came and those sacrifices that were made 40 and 2 generations before he came so God we bless this bread that it may be taken in the reverence that God had intended it to be. The cup, which represents the New Testament of his blood that was shed for the remission of sin. He wipes out sin through the blood that he shed. Before we had to sacrifice the blood of animals, but Jesus, according to writings in Hebrews, once and for all, he died. And we do this, not just because we're repentant, not just because we 
are believers, but we do this to show unbelievers that we're going to do this until he comes. So God, we bless the cup, the fruit of the vine. So now we come to share together the fellowship of believers is so very, very important. And when he passed the bread among his disciples at the Last Supper, he said, eat, this is my body, which was broken for you, and they ate together. Hallelujah. In the same like manner, he took the cup, which he declared to be the New Testament of his blood that was shed for Cal on Calvary's cross for the remission of sin. Let us drink together. Go on. 